Now that we know what similar polygons are, let's now apply them specifically to triangles. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, do I have to every single time prove that all of the angles are congruent and every single time prove that all of the sides are, are proportional? In a triangle, no you do not, okay? Just like in congruency, remember before it was you have to prove that all of the angles are congruent and all of the sides are congruent. And then we learned about the five theorems that allow us to um, kind of circumvent that by taking shortcuts. Now, of course, they're not really shortcuts. They're proven theorems to show that if these things are true, then the triangles must be congruent. Remember, that was side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, um, angle, angle, side, and hypotenuse leg. Those were my five theorems that I could use to prove that triangles are congruent. Because they're triangles, they have these special properties, and so you were able to use those. The cool thing is triangles also have similarity theorems, but there's only three of them. So if you guys remember, I wouldn't ever let you just write down side, side, side. I made you write side, side, side congruency of triangles, right? And, I, and you were like, but why do I have to do that? Of course we're talking about congruent triangles. Back then you were, but now we're going to talk about similarity and some of those actually overlap. We use the same acronym, but sometimes you'll use it for congruency and sometimes you'll use it for similarity and that's why we have to be specific about which one it is that we're using. The first one, however, is angle-angle similarity theorem. Now there was no angle-angle-angle for um, proving that so triangles are congruent because you could have all three angles congruent and the triangles are not congruent, right? However, since now we're talking about similarity and the sizes of the sides can change, I am now allowed to use the angle-angle similarity theorem. And this just says if you have two triangles where two of the angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Okay, you just need two. And the cool thing about this one is that it is the quickest way to prove that triangles are similar. It is the quickest way to prove that triangles are similar. Okay, um, if you have any two angles and their corresponding angles in a different triangle are congruent to one another, boom, triangles are similar, which is a really cool feature that this has. The other two are going to sound familiar, but because this is about similarity, it's not going to be exactly what you've used in the past. The next two are side, side, side and side, angle, side, but notice that these are similarity theorems, not congruency theorems. So let's see how that changes. In a triangle, if you have three pairs of corresponding sides, of the corresponding side lengths of two triangles, so all the sides are proportional to each other in my triangles, then you can say that the triangles are similar. So if the sides are proportional and this is a triangle, I don't even have to worry about the angles. I will automatically know that the angles are congruent and thus these are similar. So I don't have to worry about the angles if I know that all three sides are proportional to one another. Side angle side says if I have, um, if the angle of one triangle, if an angle of one triangle is congruent to a second angle of a second triangle, and the lengths of the sides, including these angles, are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So I've got two sides that are proportional and the included angle is congruent to my other triangle. I can say that these are similar triangles. So angles have to be congruent. The sides that include this angle have to be proportional. Thus, the triangles are similar to each other. All right, so now we're going to do two examples where we are determining whether our triangles are similar to each other using one of these three theorems that we just learned. So it says determine whether the triangles are similar. If they are, write a similarity statement. So if I look at example number one, I see that I'm given two angles on um, the first tri triangle ABC and I'm given two angles on triangle FGH. And you might be saying, oh, the 52s are congruent, but 81 and 47 aren't done. These two are not similar. However, what if angle B and angle F are not corresponding to one another? 
So let me go see, what would be the measure of angle A? I want you to think about how we're going to find the measure of angle A. I hope you said, hey, triangles have 180 degrees. So I can just subtract 81 and 52 from 180, which leaves me with, oh my goodness, 47 degrees. Now notice 52 is congruent to 52 and 47 is congruent to 47. I've got two pairs of congruent angles in two triangles. And so look how fast that was. I can say that triangle, I gotta make sure I go in order. I need to make sure that I have corresponding sides. The first triangle never matters. I'm just gonna say ABC because why not? That's what I learned. Is similar to triangle. I need to make sure that I line up the corresponding parts. Angle A was 47 degrees, so I need the other 47 degree angle, which is angle F. Angle B was the 81 degree angle. Angle G is gonna end up being the 40, 81 degree angle. And angle C is 53 deg 52 degrees, and angle H is 52 degrees. So I can say triangle ABC is similar to triangle FGH by angle, angle, similarity of triangles. All right, the next one's a little bit different. I've got two triangles touching each other. Anytime I have this, I like to separate them if I can, and it just makes things a little bit easier to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this again, but not touching anymore. And of course, I'm gonna keep all of the markings that I'm given. Okay, so this is M, N, P, and that's eight, four, and I've got that marking right there. Over here, this is still M, this is R, this is Q. One marking right there, but this time I have an eight, an eight here, a four here, and an eight here. So together, that's going to be 12. And I've got a six here, can't forget about that. All right, so it looks like I've got one angle congruent to another angle, okay? So either I'm gonna use angle, angle, or I'm gonna use side, angle, side. I can't use side, side, side because um, there's no way for me to find that third side because I don't know that angle. So even if I wanted to use non-right triangle trig, I don't know the measure of that angle. However, I know that they're congruent. So as long as those sides that are around it are proportional, then I can say that these are similar. So I can see that this four is smaller compared to the eight, and I can see that this six is smaller compared to the 12. So whenever I try to set up my proportion, I'm gonna do small with small, and then the bigger one with the bigger one. So I'm gonna say four over six, is that equal to eight over 12? is four over six equal to eight over 12. You can do this several ways. You can um, see four times 12, is that equal to six times eight? Or you can simplify the fractions. It is totally up to you. Two thirds equals two thirds, check. So I can say, yes, my sides are proportional and my angle is congruent, my included angle is congruent. So I can say triangle M N P is similar to triangle M again, but N was along the shorter side, so I'm gonna go along the shorter side and say R, Q, by side, angle, side, similarity of triangles. All right, let's take a look at the back. Number three says decide if the triangles are similar, then find the length of segment DB. Now, I can see that I've got two triangles that are totally overlapping each other, but I still wanna take them apart. However, before I do that, there's something I want you to pay attention to. Since they totally overlap, this angle right here, angle A, is the same angle A in the bigger triangle and the smaller triangle. So it's of course going to be congruent to itself. Now that I've marked that, now let me take it apart. So I've got this smaller triangle. Okay. 
and I've got this bigger triangle. This is A, E, D, my two markings, my nine and my six. And then I've got, oh, my marking right over there on angle E as well. And then I've got A again, C, B, 15 here, angle C here, angle A here, great. And it was asking me to find DB. Whoa, whoa, DB is not on any one of my triangles. DB is actually way over here. So let me call that X, and hey, that really helps me out because I need this side length right over here. And since AB is this length right here, which is equal to this length right here, I've got six and X, that tells me that this is six plus X. Now, before I set up any um, proportions or anything like that, I need to decide if these are similar and good. Yes, they are. I hope you said that they, yes, they are because of angle, angle. So I can say similar by angle, angle, similarity of triangles. That's great. Now I can set up my proportion and solve. I can say six over six plus X equals nine over 15. And then I can solve. 15 times six is equal to nine times six plus X. Make sure you put it in parentheses. Divide both sides by nine, or you could have totally distributed, nothing wrong with that at all. X is equal to four. And remember X was DB right over here. So I can say DB equals four. The next one says find the value of X that makes triangle RST similar to triangle HGK. So if the triangles are similar, then the similarity um, rules follow, meaning the sides have to be congruent, or sorry, the angles have to be congruent and the sides have to be proportional. So since they're giving me that similarity statement, let me mark what I can on my diagram. R will have to be congruent to H, first with first. S will have to be congruent to G. And T will have to be congruent to K. So my job is to solve for the value of X. So all I have to do is set up a proportion that's gonna allow this to happen. Now notice that I've got X here and I've got X here. Both of those X's are equivalent to each other. So you get to pick which one you want to use to solve your equation. I'm gonna use X plus seven. So X plus seven is related to GH. Let me use the same color. X plus seven is related to GH. Okay, so now I wanna come over to my other triangle and I wanna see, okay, what does that match to? I'm going from one tick mark to two tick marks. That is this right over here, which is three equals, since I want to set up a proportion, I have to use two other sides. Now, if I use this eight, which I'm tempted to because of the whole number, it looks easier to deal with than, with, than 20 over three. But if I decide to use H, I'm going to have to use three minus X. And I don't want to have to deal with two X's in the same equation. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do these two sides instead. I'm going to say 20 over three over five. And now I can solve five times X plus seven equals three times 20 over three. Of course, those cancel. So I'm left with five X plus 35. If I distribute equals 20. And I can finish solving like that. So X is equal to negative three. Is that what it asked me to do? Yes, it is. I don't have to go plug it back in anywhere. And I am done. 
And so now you know those three similarity theorems that you can use. Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side, to prove that triangles are similar.